two, one. We are now live. Good evening, everyone. We welcome you all to Ortho TV online in association with Biotech to introduce today's topic and the speaker and hand over to our moderator, Dr. Rajiv Raman. Thank you, Dr. Neeraj. And thanks to Biotech for organizing this wonderful webinar on advanced arthroscopy masterclass on root and ramp repair. And thank to my dear friend, Dr. P. S. Jaya Prasad for making this possible in short notice. So without wasting our time, I would like to introduce our faculty. Dr. P. S. Jaya Prasad uh, is one of our faculty, STEAM faculty. And Dr. Uh, myself, Dr. Rajiv Raman from Kolkata. Dr. Amit Joshi, a well-known first from Kathmandu, Nepal. And Dr. Shiyas Gajar will be joining in a short while. Well, welcome, Dr. Shiyas from Mumbai. So, without wasting our time, we'll start. Yeah, Dr. Jaya Prasad. Nice yeah, you. So, yeah. Without wasting our time, now we will start our uh, webinar. The first talk is on root repair single tunnel technique, which uh, by me only. So, my screen is visible. Yeah. Yeah, visible, visible. Yeah. So, yeah. meniscus root avulsion in single tunnel video technique. <laughs> this is a small topic uh, which I will show you one video of the medium meniscus root uh, avulsion and one video of the lateral meniscus root avulsion. So, if you see divide, uh, classify the root avulsion normally, we get in our clinical practice either traumatic root avulsion or a degenerative root avulsion. And most of these uh, root avulsions are of these two common types only. But why we are concerned about root avulsion? Because if you don't treat, this root avulsion, there will be a decreased area of tibiofemoral contact and which will increase the tibiofemoral contact pressure and ultimately that will lead to arthritic changes. And that is the reason in last one decade, we have been concentrating more and more on the root repair techniques. If you see the repair technique, normally the standard repair technique, the task tibial pull out either a single tunnel or a double tunnel, which was advised by Laprade is the standard technique we follow in our clinical practice. But yes, now people are doing with a suture anchor technique also, because sometimes suppose you are doing with ACL reconstruction, PCL reconstruction, there's always chance of tunnel collision. So in those cases, suppose you are dealing with a multi-ligament injury. I think the suture anchor technique is the best, best giving way, a, a, a way out to come out of uh, prevent the collision of the tunnel. So this is a small video technique of a lateral meniscus root avulsion. And this was a uh, football player. He has a history of bike accident. And if you can see, once we put your scope inside, you can see the whole of the root has been avulsed here. And you can see here, the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus has avulsed completely. Once I put my scope inside, you can see here, there was a cartilage loss also there. So most of this time, sometime what happens, in association with root avulsion, you have some cartilage lesion also there. If your meniscus is covering the cartilage lesion, I think most uh, uh, normally we don't uh, bother over this cartilage lesion. You just leave it like that and most of the time it will be covered with the fibrous cartilage. You can see here there was a, a small cartilage lesion here and once I pull my root here, uh, meniscus here, I think that was covering the whole of the cartilage defect. So now I planned for a single tunnel root avulsion uh, repair technique transosis. So the best way is use your normal ACL jig. You can see this is the normal ACL jig I am using to make my tunnel and always try to bring your tunnel on the posterior part of the slope, not on the anterior part so that you are more anatomical. And once you have drill it, pass your suture lasso. Or normally I prefer using a colored lasso and park into the andromedial port. Now you can use any of the suture passing device to take a pipe through the root area. Normally you can use a tape or a fiber tape or a fiber wire or a uh, you can if uh, it's not able you can use your ethy bond also to repair this root avulsion. So the self retrieving device is the best one because once you take the bite normally you can take uh, the whole of uh, 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 you can park the whole of the suture in the antibacterial portal you can see here and now you can use your knot pusher which we normally use in the shoulder arthroscopy to put two or three bites there uh, uh, half inches there you can see i am putting three or four half inches there so that you can hold whole of the root now once you have taken that bite you can see now try to pass that to the transosseous tunnel over the anterior uh, over the antero uh, medial aspect of the tibia. So once we pull it, you can fix it either. You can see here now it's coming out. And once you 
fix it, you can see whole of the root is getting attached over the anatomical area. And anteriorly, you can fix it either with a tibial suture post or a disc over the anteromedial aspect. Two things is important. Whenever you are preparing for a root avulsion, if it is an acute tear, you have a root raw area there. If it is a chronic tear, normally you have a cartilaginous area there. So normally you try to create your crater, remove all the cartilage from the uh, downslope of the posterolateral corner of your proximal tibia and try to make a raw area so that you have a good fibrous area, a, a good raw area where there will be a good fibrous healing between the root and the uh, crater. So this is a small video technique of lateral meniscus root avulsion. And now, in the same way, normally you get a medial meniscus root avulsion also. Sometimes what happens in neglected cases, you can see that this medial meniscus root avulsion, avulsion sometimes it gets attached with your some of the fibrous layer of the, your PCL also because of the proximity with the PCL. So either if you want to release it, you can remove those fibrous bands or sometimes you can take a bite through the fibrous band at the root area so that you can put your posterior horn of the medial meniscus of the anatomical location. And in chronic tear, you can see here, this is very important, repression of the crater, where your posterior horn of the medial meniscus or the lateral meniscus will sit. So there should be no cartilage in that part. You can see here, all the cartilage we have removed from this part so that once my meniscus root sits there, there is a good fibrosis between the root and the raw area of the posterior part of the tibial slope. So again, the same technique you can see. So Try to use your ACL jig and one and uh, fire your bit pit. You can see now I am firing my bit pit. Again, try to make your four millimeter tunnel. You can see once you make your four millimeter tunnel, so use your curate as a protecting device so that you are not damaging the posterior horn of the root of the medial meniscus. Once you have made your four millimeter tunnel, now pass your suture lasso. You can see here. I'm passing my suture lasso and park it in the anteromedial portal, anteromedial portal. So once you have parked it now, again, with the self retrieving device, try to take bite to the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. And you can see here, normally here, so you have, uh, uh, I have taken bite to the posterior uh, root of the medial meniscus. And now with this yellow uh, transosseous so suture loop, pass your suture through the transosseous tunnel over the anteromedial aspect of the tibia. And here you can see there was a fibrous band in the menis, uh, meniscus, between the meniscus root and some part of the PCL. So once you have put it over the anatomical area, you can remove this fibrous band because now you will not, you will not have any attachment of the posterior uh, uh, root, uh, part of the root of the meniscus and this fibrous band. So now, you pass your suture, you can see here, and one of once you pass it, the whole of the whole of, whole of the whole of the root has sit well over the raw area. And this is the important part. Whether you are dealing with a medial meniscus root avulsion or a lateral meniscus root avulsion, three important tip and trick which is important is first try to be anatomical. If you are dealing with an acute case, yes, you have a raw area in that part. If you are dealing it with a chronic case, always try to prepare a good bed. So you remove the cartilage properly. Sometimes you may need a posterior medial or posterior lateral portal. So remove the cartilage properly. Make your tunnel. Pass your suture lasso through the park it to the anteromedial portal. And then pass your bite, so biting suture through the transosseous tunnel. Anteriorly, you can fix it over the tibial post or a, uh, or a disc. So what is important for meniscus root repair normally in our clinical practice, these two messages are very important. If you are dealing with a traumatic tear and non-degenerative knee, most of the time, if you're dealing with a non-degenerative knee, always, always try to repair this root. Always, always try to repair this root. But if you are dealing with a tear in degenerative tear in an arthritic knee or a virus knee of more than 20 degree or 30 degree of virus, most of the time try to be conservative. So it is important. Traumatic tear, not degenerative knee, try to repair it, repair it, repair it. Degenerative tear in arthritic knee, always, always try to be conservative. Thank you. I think we will have question at the end of the session. So now I would like to invite Dr. P. S. Jaya Prasad from Hyderabad. He will be talking on root repair technique and clinical evidence. Uh,
Uh, able to see Rajiv Raman. Yeah. Able to see? No, no, we can't see your slides there. No, no. no. Uh, you log out from there. I think yeah, it's I have stopped good. sharing. One second. Click on share screen. I think your, your PowerPoint should be open on your window or app. Yeah. Now it's okay. Yes. Close that one. We don't hire. It's yes. okay. Yes. Huh? Okay. Yes, we can see now. Yes. Yeah. So, <clears throat> thank you, Rajiv Raman. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk on the meniscal root tear uh, repair techniques and clinical evidence. Uh, so broadly, uh, there are uh, two types of techniques. Uh, what is, one is a pull-out suture technique, another one is suture anchor technique. And uh, in pull-out suture technique, uh, there are two, again, two types. One is a single tunnel technique and another one is a double tunnel technique. And single tunnel and double tunnel technique, uh, there is a biology because you are drilling the uh, tibia. So there is a uh, uh, lot of uh, chances of uh, more healing at the uh, root area. And the advantage of the suture anchor technique is uh, there is no need for the tunnel placement and uh, no bungee effect. And uh, if, uh, even you can do, uh, you know, they, there won't be any tunnel correlation in the ACL, PCL uh, uh, reconstruction. And even osteotomy also easy in the suture anchor technique. So you can use a suture, a soft suture anchor, or you can use a normal anchor uh, through the <coughs> posterior medial portal. So you can uh, choose whichever you like to do. And uh, Laparata is proposed anatomical uh, trans tibial pullout technique. He has proposed that these are the landmarks for the proper uh, uh, placement of uh, the uh, trans tibial drilling. Because uh, this is the footprint for the medial uh, meniscus root, uh, or root. that is 11.5 mm uh, posterior to the medial tibial eminence, and the lateral uh, meniscus root is 5.3 mm lateral to the lateral uh, medial to the lateral tibial eminence. So these are the very precise points where you have to aim for your uh, curved aimers uh, through medial or lateral compartment and to get uh, correct anatomical point uh, for the trans tibial pullout technique. So these are the instrumentation now uh, we should have these aimers to uh, uh, get into the uh, spot on the right and left and uh, the you can use a wire ultra tape wire or uh, tape and uh, the 4.5 mm drill needed endo button or you can use a knotless anchor on the tibia and uh, you need a guide wire and the tape or wire uh, for the opening uh, of the suture. This is a first pass mini. You can use a first pass mini or the uh, knee scorpion, whichever uh, you love to have. So these are the very uh, minute instruments so to catch the uh, posterior root. And these are the video uh, for posterior root uh, to have a high index of suspicion for the uh, younger people for the lateral meniscus and older people for the medial meniscus uh, root tear. And you should probe and identify for every case because you should not uh, uh, neglect these. Uh, or uh, uh, identify these uh, root pairs. And then the mobilization uh, as uh, uh, cough pairs, we mobilize the cough, we, we have to mobilize to keep or reduce the meniscus inside the knee, uh, these extruded knees, uh, extruded meniscus in uh, uh, chronic tears, you should get to the meniscus inside. And for that, you need to have the proper uh, the fibrous tissue has to be removed with the uh, scissor or the half. Uh, and then you use the uh, scorpion to uh, your uh, add sutures. Uh, um, minimum uh, two sutures should be there. And then you need to drill and uh, breathe in and uh, then uh, take out the uh, shave the area. And uh, uh, important thing is. Uh, um, uh, have the proper crater uh, bleeding area for the footprint. That is very important. It is a open scoop to remove the entire uh, area, that area. And um, and uh, this is the so thread to pull out the 
uh, uh, the municipal threads. This is shuttling the uh, so and pipe threads into the tunnel. And important thing is uh, uh, use a six mm handle uh, so that uh, the um, threads won't interact into the soft tissue in the anterior side. So that is the uh, one trick you need to use uh, for the pulling of the sutures and uh, then. So once you reduce, so you need to do a knee ROM so that you can settle settle into the uh, footprint area. So that is very important. And another one is whenever you are uh, fixing, you fix on the anterior medial aspect of the uh, tibia, proximal tibia, and uh, have a, again look inside the knee. This is a one technique, and another te technique is a double tunnel technique where you have the parallel guide here and put inside and have the six point five mm away from the this uh, one tunnel single tunnel and uh, have a button and the same uh, steps will be there uh, for this step and this is a suture anchor technique where you need to have a 2.3 mm uh, 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 tunnel placement and uh, put the retrograde this is a leading suture to retrograde the q fix anchor or the root fix anchor dedicated anchor to pull inside the um, uh, footprint and then repair uh, the uh, meniscus so these are the three different uh, techniques and uh, so coming to the evidence, uh, whether uh, can we go for a non operative management of this uh, root base? This uh, um, uh, study was published in uh, KSST in 2007 to 17. This is a retrospective uh, study in um, uh, root repair patients. So there was uh, uh, this patient was non operated uh, of, uh, uh, for uh, 15, 80, 58. Uh, months of uh, follow up and uh, there was 31 percent under uh, patients uh, 31 percent of patients underwent total arthroplasty in this study uh, so a very important thing is uh, non-operative doesn't work in root tests these patients will have a poor clinical outcome later and worsening of osteoarthritis high rate of uh, converting into total knee arthroplasty because of uh, uh, accelerated osteoarthritis uh, without meniscus partial meniscectomy will it work so this is a retrospective study uh, between the um, non-operative and meniscectomy, partial meniscectomy patients. And there is no difference uh, in final Tegna score, IKDC, KL grading, in progression and uh, converting into arthroplasty later date. And uh, so arthroscopic partial meniscectomy doesn't provide any benefit. It's like a, uh, not doing anything. It is non-operative. And this is again a comparative study but, uh, of clinical radiological results between the partial meniscectomy and refixation of the medial meniscus. So 20 patients they have taken uh, mean follow-up uh, for the partial meniscectomy was 67 uh, months and refixation they have taken 37 patients. So refixation group has significantly better lysome score, IC, IKDC score and uh, they showed less KL grading progression uh, and the medial joint space narrowing. So, in partial meniscectomy patients, they have 55% of patients converted into total knee arthroplasty. Most of them are the partial uh, knee replacement. So, refixation group has no carbon check to DKR. This is again a biomechanical study in uh, uh, cadavers uh, uh, between the single tunnel or double tunnel transtipial uh, technique. So, there won't be uh, any um, difference in the single tunnel and uh, uh, double tunnel in as for the biomechanical study as for the displacement is concerned and ultimate failure to load is concerned. And this is a biomechanical comparison study between the suture anchor and the transtibial pull out technique. The suture anchor technique shows a significantly lower displacement uh, and higher stiffness, significantly higher stiffness than the transtibial pull out technique. So, uh, and uh, this is another study, is a comparative study again, arthroscopic suture anchor repair versus the suture repair in posterior root tears. And they have they evaluated functionally and radiographically. There is no significant difference as for the functional radio, radiographic uh, um, the results for the suture anchor and uh, um, uh, blood technique. But important thing is uh, reduction of the meniscal extrusion in both techniques. That is a very important thing. So these are the uh, key take home away message is high index of suspicion in young patients 
in lateral meniscus and medial uh, medial meniscus for in the older patient and you can choose uh, double tunnel technique or uh, suture anchor technique but most of the people they do a single tunnel technique and uh, centralization of the meniscus to have a uh, meniscus inside your um, uh, um, tibia femoral joint to have a axial load otherwise uh, the failure failure uh, there is no need for repair of uh, meniscus extruded meniscus uh, without centralizing the meniscus uh, without uh, having a good um, debridement on the meniscal side uh, extra side to have a centralized uh, meniscus so always you do a meniscal anatomical fixation for uh, good outcome thank you thank you Leah. Can you stop sharing your screen? Yes, yes, yes. So next talk will be Dr. Sriyas Gajam from Mumbai. He will be talking on root repair with osteotomy, how I do it. Over to you, Dr. Sriyas. Hi, thank you, Rajiv. And, uh... Thank you, Jaya Prasad, for the invitation. Can you see my screen? Yeah, your screen is visible. Okay. You are audible also, Shresh. Okay. So, good evening, everyone. And uh, my topic is on meniscal root repair with osteotomy, how I do it. Uh, I am Shreyas Gajan and I work at Kokila Bin Dhirubhai Ambani Hospital in Mumbai. As we just heard in the previous talks, there is no doubt that when you have a medial meniscal root tear, because uh, there is a disruption in the continuity of the circumferential fibers, which leads to failure of conversion of axial loads to transverse hoop stresses, thereby increasing contact pressures, leading to greater loads on the uh, already weakening cartilage, causing acceleration of degeneration and the arthritic process. Medial meniscal root tears really need to be looked at uh, carefully and treated appropriately uh, as indicated. We also know uh, in the last decade from our uh, knowledge uh, of uh, treating this pathology is that 30% are generally seen in the younger group. They are traumatic and lateral, whereas predominantly uh, the middle-aged uh, females uh, who have a degenerative type of uh, uh, root tear uh, are generally uh, present with some sort of a trivial injury and they are predominantly medial-sided. So the big question is uh, in this degenerative type of uh, problems that is repair really beneficial? And uh, in these last uh, few years, uh, there have been uh, studies uh, more uh, from South Korea uh, and to some extent from the rest of the world, which show that it does significantly improve outcome scores and prevents progression of osteoarthritis in the short term. However, what remains of concern is that the repair in this study overall and in systematic review and meta-analysis showed that it only heals in 60% of patients, which means that there is another 40% which will inevitably progress towards severe chondral damages and subsequent osteoarthritis despite our uh, attempt at repairing it. So which are these patients? So studies uh, have highlighted that there are certain risk factors which would lead to poor outcome, namely older age patient, higher BMI, and advanced out of bridge grade three or four, or the presence of uh, deformity, uh, typically virus more than five degrees. So let's try and remember that when we treat any uh, problem uh, regards the knee joint, what is important is to first look at alignment, thereafter address any stability issues, and then look at the meniscus and the cartilage. So if we look at uh, this algorithm for management, then yes, in these high-risk groups, uh, one would think about doing an osteotomy alongside a medial meniscal root repair. But let's not forget that the goal of the medial meniscal root repair is to restore contact pressures and kinematics. But in the already advancing osteoarthritic knee, where there is diffuse and higher grades of cartilage changes, this may really not work despite the attempt as highlighted in these studies. And this amounts to around 40% of this patient group. 
So this would be really a bad indication to do a root repair, even if possible. Uh, and therefore we must choose our patients wisely to deal with it. Also when studies have shown that at second look arthroscopy, following a high tibial osteotomy, and this study again from South Korea, looked at 31 consecutive patients, and 20 of them were available for a second look, where they classified healing of the root repair into complete, incomplete, or no healing. And they found that only 50% of patients healed completely. And there was a higher rate of healing after high tibial osteotomy in patients where the repair could not be attempted because of poor quality tissue. Also, they noted from this study uh, that the healing of the meniscus was not associated with improved clinical outcome. So we do know that this is a smaller cohort with a shorter follow-up, but certainly it raises certain questions which definitely need attention. Also, uh, another study from South Korea showed that in patients where we just do an osteotomy without attempting to do a root repair, uh, at follow-up, it did heal because we know from our uh, principles in management uh, of uh, deformities following uh, you know, osteoarthritis is that when you take the load off, there is uh, healing and therefore uh, it, uh, it is the principle for doing a high tibial osteotomy. Also in the recent years, there have been studies which have really looked at whether medial meniscal root repair alongside high tibial osteotomy is beneficial. And this study published just uh, uh, two years ago, uh, less than two years, said that it does not, uh, although it appears to improve the healing response, it did not show any significant clinical and radiological outcomes as short-term follow-up. So really uh, the repair does not translate uh, into good outcomes when done alongside a high tibial osteotomy. Also another paper uh, from another group confirmed the same findings. So really, uh, you know, looking at all this evidence in the present day, uh, at least in the last two to three years, my management uh, of root tears in association with a virus more than five degrees uh, is variable. So uh, as highlighted in the previous videos, I'll just speed it up in the interest of time. I would go ahead and do a root repair if the outer bridge grid is not advanced. But if not, I would, uh, if there is an advanced grade three or four osteoarthritis, then I would not hesitate just to do a high tibial osteotomy without actually going ahead and repairing the root. So this is one such patient. And very important that when I see uh, patients who have a medial meniscal root tear, majority of them only come with MRI scans having seen somebody elsewhere. So I do get uh, X-rays, which are very important. And I also importantly get scanograms to check the alignment because my management will completely be dependent on what the alignment is. So in this patient, you can see that there is a, a difference on the left side compared to the right side being more various. So when we looked inside, so always I do a diagnostic arthroscopy prior to doing an osteotomy. So these are the findings. You can see that there is, you know, grade three stroke four changes uh, already in the medial joint, both the femoral and the tibial compartment. And that's the, uh, you know, the root tear, which you can identify. Also, there are changes uh, in the, that posterior lateral part of the, uh, posterior medial part of the tibial plateau. So although this was reducible, uh, taking into account the evidence in the last few years, I decided to just do a osteotomy without actually repairing it. And the steps are more or less standard. I do a medial open wedge, so it involves a medial incision uh, centralized between the tibial tubercle and the posterior medial part of the tibia. Uh, you know, meticulous dissection to elevate the um, MCL is performed. Thereafter, uh, uh, the patella tendon and the posterior structures are protected. And uh, under fluoroscopy guidance, first a guide wire is passed parallel to the knee joint at the upper, at the tip of the fibula. Uh, and then subsequently, you know, two wires are passed uh, as seen here. And then we do an osteotomy, which just stops short of the uh, lateral cortex because you don't want to fracture that. Uh, and then there is stepwise uh, opening of the osteotomy as seen here. There are dedicated instruments and various companies 
deal with this. The idea is to uh, ensure that the lateral hinge is intact as seen here. And then a dedicated plate is put in, in this situation, a wedge type of plate. So the correction is decided depending on the uh, limb length alignment view. So as you can see here, uh, there is a wedge plate and we're trying to fix both proximally and uh, distally. And that looks the final fluoroscopic image. And you know this is one such patient at two years. Uh, he had a right-sided high tibial osteotomy for this problem. And you can see the, on the right, the scanogram shows a near normal restoration of alignment. And really he's become pain-free. Uh, you can see his alignments that uh, follow up at two years. He's got full uh, range of motion. So really, uh, you know, one, there's a room for thought whether uh, a concomitant root repair needs to be done alongside an HTO for these advanced grade three and four outer bridge changes. So in summary, uh, medial meniscal root tear, as we know, alters biomechanics and kinematics. Traumatic root tears without any hesitation do well with repair and we should repair. The transtibial pullout technique so far is uh, my go-to technique uh, when doing a root repair. However, the presence of degeneration uh, and its progression in 40% of patients is concerning. The emerging midterm results are satisfactory, but we don't have long-term outcomes for this problem. Whether our repair really prevents progression, again, remains to be seen in the long term. And uh, again, my most important message from this talk would be to please check the alignment. And if there is various more than five degrees, there is enough evidence that there should be a high tibial osteotomy to be performed alongside uh, a root repair, if you believe in one, or without repairing the root. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes, thank you, Sirius. Uh, can you stop sharing your screen? Yes. Yeah. Now I would like to invite Dr. Amit Joshi from Kathmandu, Nepal. He will be talking on ramp lesion. Over to you, Dr. Amit Joshi. Uh, thank you, uh, Rajiv. Thank you. Jaya, uh, for invitation, those three talks were really nice and it's challenging for me because I'm not talking about root this time. I'm talking a little away from the root, which is a ramp. So uh, what is a ramp? Uh, if you uh, think about the definition of ramp, it is a sloping surface which joins two different levels. So if you see these pictures uh, on, your, uh, on your right side, this is a diagrammatic uh, meniscus, and you see that the posterior capsule is attached through some ligaments, and this is called, this area is called ramp. And this is the arthroscopic picture. You can see the meniscus, the posterior horn of the meniscus, and then from posterior horn, there is a slope that goes down and comes up. These reason, this reason is called as the ramp tier. And when we talk about this ramp tier, we are talking about tier at the Minisco capsular junction. So this is um, an example of arthroscopy view of a ramp tier. You can see that on your right side this is the meniscus, and next to the meniscus is the minisco capsular ligament, and that has been torn here, which is very well uh, described in this um, pictorial. Data. I'll not go into uh, the classifications. The ramp tier, which was classically described for minisco capsular tier, now it has been extended. Uh, and this tier is now includes some part of the real periphery uh, part of the tier of the meniscus as well. So I'll not go into detail of those. A uh, ramp tier is also known as a hidden lesion. If you go to literature, you'll find out that uh, this is grouped under the hidden lesion. Why it is called hidden lesion? For me, basically, uh, why I level them as the hidden lesion is because it is not visualized from the anterior arthroscopy. So this picture shows that from anteriorly, if you look at the meniscus, you'll find out that the meniscus is intact. And even if you go to the posterior medial compartment, um, unlike others, usually if it is an acute one, so there will be a layer of fibrous um, you know, tissue or fibrous layer, which will hide the real tear, which will, I'll show you in one of my uh, surgical videos. So this causes, apparently, if you see it, uh, there will be no tear, but if you probe, start probing it, you'll find out that there is a ramp tier. 
Another very important one is the MRI sensitivity. Um, uh, also, since most of these MRI um, of knee are done in extension of the knee, these ramp tears are reduced and the detection of uh, ramp tear in MRI, their sensitivity and specificity are debated. So this was a KSSTA in 2017. Uh, they say that around sensitivity of 53%. Another paper from 2017 from AJSM, uh, the sensitivity was 48. Uh, the re more recent paper, 2020, uh, maybe people have started experiencing more knowledge about this ramp tier. And because of use of the secondary features of ramp tier, uh, the sensitivity and specificity has increased. But remember, these papers come from Europe and America, and these they have specialized musculoskeletal radiologists, musculoskeletal MRI readers, you know, and they their sensitivity will definitely high. But what about our context? I don't know how in Nepal, but this was a paper that was published our paper in JSM, um, and then in one year back when we analyzed our cases, we had twelve ramp repair in two years time and. Unfortunately, only one were reported as ramp tier. So 11 out of 12 were not reported as, as ramp tier and we diagnosed them while doing an arthroscopy. So that is why these are the hidden lesion. Um, if, but uh, if you understand uh, this lesion, the mechanism has evolved and you see that because of the more diagnostic, uh, you know, acumens that we have at this moment, probing the ramp, ramp area, uh, going into the posterior medial compartment using various angle arthroscope. This has improved the diagnosis. And this is our experience of last, you know, three years. You see that the number of the detection of ramp lesion have dramatically increased in 2021. And even in two months, one and a half months of this year, we have already four cases of ramp repair detected. So this is a, a small animated video, if you see, uh, to understand the ramp lesion, this is the posterior horn. And if you know that there is a posterior capsule. So meniscus directly doesn't attach to the posterior capsule. It attaches with the two ligaments. The superiorly, it is the meniscocapsular ligament. Inferiorly, it is meniscotibial. So if there is a tear of these ligament that attaches meniscus to the posterior capsule, then these lesions are called ramp tier so this is a video in which you can see that uh, this is not a hidden lesion this is a clear ramp so this is a medial meniscus which is quite normal uh, the flounce was visible normal but if you go into the posterior medial compartment you'll see that there is a big ramp tear and this is a case of chronic instability of the ACL. <clears throat> so what we do in ramp uh, lesions is we repair the ramp so you understand now that this is um, our uh, you know, meniscocapsular ligament, meniscotibial ligament, and if there is a tear, so what we have to do is apply a suture so that we can tie this ligaments with the meniscus. And this is the classic definition of the ramp tear. Let's see how it is done. How I personally approach the ramp lesion is, uh, I consider all patient with ACL has ramp tear unless proven otherwise. So, Every patient will undergo a needle diagnosis of the posterior medial compartment. And I have a very high degree of suspicion if there is a high grade of Lachman test, if there is explosive pivot shift test, and if the ACL tear is a chronic, which uh, in our definition about six months or old, in those cases, I meticulously examine the ramp area of the posterior medial meniscus. <laughs> I always do a modified Gilkis maneuver to see the posterior medial compartment. And whenever get, I get a ramp repair, I don't have a conservative indication of treatment of ramp repair. I repair them with a all inside technique. So this is a small video, five minutes video, uh, uh, which will show us uh, the ramp, our ramp repair technique. Um, so this was actually a 33-year-old gentleman, uh, office-going uh, person, sustained injury about three weeks ago. And then when he presented to us, he had a Lachman positive. And this patient was not having an a explosive pivot shift test. If you look at MRI, the MRI was very uneventful and the ramp lesion was not detected in this MRI. So all the cuts uh, were normal. This is an arthroscopic view. Um, the ACL was torn. And this is the medial compartment. If you see uh, the medial meniscus, this is I'm probing the root, which is normal. 
the medial meniscus looks pretty okay. The flounce is maintained. But if you pull that meniscus, you will feel that this is the springy or there is an excessive movement of the posterior horn of the meniscus. Uh, so I decided to go into the posteromedial compartment by modi modified Gilkis technique. And in the posteromedial compartment, I see a very innocuous looking lesion in the ramp area. So if you don't know what is ramp lesion, what is hidden lesion, there is a high chance that you'll just consider, the, consider it as a normal. So I pass according to Sonri Cote. They say that needle palpation is very important one. When, he, when I palpated with needle, I felt that there is some uh, ramp lesion. So I made a posteromedial portal. And then I pass my probe through the posteromedial portal to assess the extent of the ramp lesion. So this is the ramp. And if you try to lift it, you will find out that this is a complete deep ramp in which both menisco femoral and uh, menisco capsular and the menisco tibial ligaments are torn. So this is very important. Some people use 70 degree scope. Some people use your scope from the posteromedial to evaluate. But this was a straightforward small ramp lesion. Some people may say that this can be treated conservatively. But I feel that putting one odd screw in the posterior part, which is very easy, is uh, will give a you know um, quiet sleep. Uh, thinking that I have already repaired. And repair is same as a uh, meniscal repair. You just do a, use a diamond rasp to freshen the edges. I use a no suction saver. So you do not put any suction, but use that saver to abrade the edges of these torn edges. And once the preparation is done, then I use a suture lasso. Uh, this is right knee. So I use a left-sided suture lasso. So, and then um, the standard technique for those people who do regularly shoulder, these are the standard, you know, kind of a bank art repair technique. So you first pass, why I, what I do is I first pass through the uh, ligaments or uh, through the periphery of the capsule. Then on the second bite, I take a bite on the periphery of the meniscus. You can see that the bite is going right from the capsule and coming out of the meniscus. So I pass proline, um, uh, I pass enough length so that even if I take out my lasso, there is enough um, uh, end of the, you know, proline remain into the joint. So I take out both uh, the limb outside, use one limb to shuttle the um, orthocord in this case. So this is um, two zero orthocord. So I, uh, number two, sorry, number two orthocord, I shuttle that using that. So this is SMC is a sliding locking knot. I apply this SMC knot outside and then deliver the knot gradually with the helpering the knot inside the joint gradually. Don't pull it so hard because it may just cause a chisaw cutting of the meniscus and the tissue. And then make sure that your knot is on the capsular side. So not in the meniscal side, but it is in the capsular side. So the first knot is being tied and I throw one alternate half hitches, one or two. And then I check again, uh, either my uh, repair is stable. I could see that there is a room for another, uh, uh, you know, suture here. So I pass my second suture again using the same lasso loop. Again, to repeat, take first bite into the capsule. You come from the tear area and then you throw uh, your needle so that you take bite of the uh, of the meniscus. Go on through both the areas. Then you pass your uh, push your uh, proline so that you have enough length inside the joint. Now the other limb, which is inside the joint, is grabbed and you know pulled outside that, uh, you know, posterior medial portal, then use the same one limb to subtle uh, uh, orthocord. This orthocord has been subtle. Again, apply a SMC knot and gradually, gently uh, pass that knot inside the joint and tie on the capsular side. So this is the second knot. You can see that the knot is well tied on the capsular side. I pass another one half inch so that I lock and secure my knot. And then finally, once the knot is secured, 
the cut the suture with using a suture cutting device. And then again, you go in to the anteromedial uh, uh, compartment, good and strong enough. Then I come, come into the medial compartment. So I come to the medial compartment and check the anterior. Uh, if you remember earlier, it was very mobile. Now it is a very rigidly fixed into the posterior capsule. Thank you very much. Uh, I just like to, we, it is more frequent than we think. Examination of the posterior medial compartment is essential. Even if there is a smallest of the doubt, these lesions are hidden lesion. And Sonri Kote has advised that you can pass a needle, try to probe that ramp area. If you find out that there is some problem in the ramp area, make a posterior medial portal. Pass your probe and identify, examine the ramp area very carefully. People say that we want to make sure that we have repaired it perfectly so that we have predictable outcome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amit. Thank you, Amit, for excellent talk. I think now uh, it's open for discussion. The first talk was on root repair, signal tunnel technique. Any question on that? Uh, would would yeah, uh, your number of uh, uh, sutures that you apply into the root will differ between medial meniscus uh, root tear and the lateral meniscus root tear? So, because uh, you showed that you apply only one suture. Yeah, yeah. And then Jaya was showing that he was applying two yeah, sutures. So, normally, there are two techniques. Uh, normally, either a, 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 you can use a single suture or a double suture through a single tunnel, or you can use a double suture through a double tunnel. The advantage of double tunnel is as described by Laparadage as you are increasing the contact area. But disadvantage is that most of these root tear are associated with either your ACL or PCL injuries. So putting two tunnels there, management of tunnel is quite difficult. So I think uh, the Laparadage paper was for isolated root tear, I think, for which he was applying a double tunnel technique. Again, for more security, yes, you can put two sutures one over the medial part, one of the lateral part and take it through the tunnel so that you have a wider contact area. But I do through a single suture technique, I think uh, that has given a good result uh, in three or four years of follow-up. But yet, this, this is called quite common in clinical practice. People usually put two sutures and part it, pass it through a single tunnel. So yes, what is your take on double tunnel root repair technique as described by Laprade? Um... Well, so far I haven't attempted it. I'm quite happy with the single tunnel repairs. Only thing is that I use two sutures and I use the cinch configuration. So uh, earlier I used to, so I, I again, I was going to ask you, uh, all of you as well, but I do the transtibial pullout technique. And earlier I used to have some sort of a, uh, you know, anterior cortical button. But uh, again, as you mentioned in your talk, that uh, the all suture uh, or the anchor suture anchor repair uh, has a stronger rigidity compared to the transtibial pullout. So I, I use the uh, anchor, you know, the shoulder anchors instead of the uh, trans, you know, the anterior tibial buttons. So that is one way I have modified to minimize uh, kind, uh, you know, to, or rather to increase the rigidity. And secondly, I just make a uh, a socket, uh, I don't come all the way out to the anterior tibial cortex. So again, to minimize the bungee cord effect uh, as well. So th this is what I tend to do regularly for my uh, root repairs. You prefer single suture or double suture? Uh, see, uh, Rajiv, this is very interesting. And uh, Shreyas was also saying, trying to say that the kind of injury root tears are in two uh, root tears the quality of uh, meniscus is very good so the chances of cut out or this thing is very very um, less when you are we are talking about traumatic one. so if you are dealing with traumatic one medial meniscus root tear i'm okay with a single suture also 
But if the same traumatic in the lateral meniscus, you remember that the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus is attached with the ligament of Humphrey and ligament of the Resper. So these ligament always try to pull the lateral meniscus uh, up. And that is one of the reasons why uh, lateral meniscus root tear are not, you know, easy to miss because you find out some attachment. And actually, this attachment is not into the bone. But this attachment is actually with the uh, meniscofemoral ligament. So in lateral meniscus, in traumatic, I use uh, in the middle meniscus, if it is traumatic, I'm okay with one. But I use tape nowadays rather than the ortho. Dr. Jaya, you told about good rigidity with the suture anchor techniques. Would you prefer of putting a suture anchor on the lateral root repair also? Because it's easy to put the anchor on the medial side. But for the lateral side, sometimes it's very difficult. Yeah, lateral also you can put it because uh, you take out the retrograde uh, 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 passion. You can uh, have a leading suture from the inside out. So once you take the leading suture uh, through the inside and one, uh, and then you take out the leading suture and pull the anchor, uh, pull the threads, so it will lock inside the uh, drilled part. That is a 2.3 part of uh, drilled part. With the you no know, Q-fix, it will become bulge and uh, even uh, the uh, suture-fix anchor also will become bulge and uh, it will lock inside. The suture anchor technique, any one of you panelists use uh, the CR because you are not sure how much you are going inside. No, I want to use uh, this one, uh, CR. Suresh? Yeah, I don't use the CM. So, but you are using the suture technique. So, that is your standard practice, or you use it for, for multi ligament injury where you want uh, uh, to avoid the collision of the tunnel? So, uh, actually, you know, the, it is quite valid to just do a suture anchor, but just, I just want to keep it simple and you know, whatever I'm uh, comfortable doing on a regular basis. If I add something which I seldom do, it may just increase uh, the surgical time and probably I may not be happy with uh, the kind of technique I'm doing. So ancient, I modify it. And I make a socket rather than tunnels and I use an anchor for anterior tibial cortex fixation and not any suture discs or button. The second talk was by Dr. P. A. Jaya Prasad on root repair technique and clinical evidence. There was a very good measurement by Laprade, Dr. Jaya. So how yeah. often do you follow in your clinical practice? Very difficult to have those accurate management. So in chronic yeah. root tear, so how so, do you uh, choose your anatomical point? Tip and trick. So there, there are two things. One is uh, uh, soft tissue landmarks and the bony landmarks. So TBLA eminence for the medial uh, meniscus uh, root uh, um, attachment. Uh, from the PCL, it is around 10 mm. So that those things you can correlate. And it's like ACL when we do ACL footprint. Uh, uh, so the same thing we see and uh, uh, from back to front, medial to lateral. So where, where is the TBL spine eminence ends and uh, how much is distance. So uh, like that, you can uh, see and uh, do the things. So it's it's an anatomical landmark you follow in your clinical yeah. practice. Yes. And what about Amit? How do you find this anatomical landmark? What are the, your anatomical landmarks for medial and lateral root tip? Well, I, I think it's it's not that difficult what uh, Laprad has, has mentioned. Measurement of those things is not difficult. Uh, uh, in the medial side, uh, what I do is if I decide to do a root repair, I do a good pie crust so that I have a wide open, you know, your medial joint line and then those anatomical landmarks are clearly visible if you do a good pie crusting and your uh, joint is well open uh, the difficulty is only when uh, the joint is really tight you know and then you are not able to visualize the posterior part so i think if you do a good pie crusting and see it uh, try to use your uh, probe to measure and identify and i use uh, you know um, the radio frequency ablator to mark those area first and then once I have marked, I change my scope from one portal to another so that I, didn't, I can identify exact location. And then probably making it anatomic is uh, more important.
than just bringing your root into the bone. So your root repair has to be really anatomics for that. The the delicate biomechanics of the meniscus works. Thank you, Amit. I think that is a good point to mark it with a radio frequency or some marker so that you are over the anatomical point. The next talk was with uh, root repair with osteotomy. I think very important talk. So Shreyas, uh, what are your contraindications for uh, malalignment? So when you think, yes, this malalignment, me, I will go, not go for a root repair. I will go for osteotomy first. Um, so it is, there have been patients which have managed non-operatively who have had root tears, but obviously the extent of osteoarthritis is significant and also their pain may not correlate accurately with this event. So, you know, it must just be a presentation of progressive osteoarthritis. So I think clinical decision making uh, plays a very important role. And sometimes I don't hesitate to wait for three months trial of non-operative treatment if I'm in doubt. And then if it fails, then I, I may, uh, you know, uh, do a root repair. This is the ones where I'm talking about is the various less than five degrees. The ones who are more than five degrees with the root repair and symptomatic, uh, I will offer them an osteotomy. Osteotomy and root repair, how often do you do simultaneously? Because in one of the patients, you planned for osteotomy only. Yeah, yeah so uh, Rajiv, I have I must a root repair whenever I do an osteotomy. Uh, initially, it started because uh, in the few patients, the quality of the root, as we discussed uh, uh, just a little while ago, was bad. So, you know, the, the tendency of the suture cutout was high. So, you know, I may be able to do a watertight repair, but it might give way or fail. And that is what has been shown in literature as well, that, you know, there is a percentage of root repairs despite our attempt fails, and that's what leads to progressive arthritis. So, uh, I just focus on the osteotomy and... You know, uh, uh, so far I've got uh, two two years results. I've not got anything longer than that uh, in this group of patients where I've just done an osteotomy without a repair and the results are encouraging. So I think whatever the, so the Korean group has the largest, uh, you know, work on this particular topic and uh, they seem to uh, be saying the same, uh, although the number, it's midterm. So uh, I, I think I'm pretty happy. I don't want to be over uh, aggressive and repair the root because it may be pointless. Uh, Rajiv, can, can, I, Rajiv yeah. can I ask Please, a Amit. question to Shreyas? Just, just a principally, you know, principally, uh, if you see that there is a root tear which could be repaired with, um, you know, KL3, uh, say KL3 osteoarthritis. So my point is, even if you do osteotomy, there is some amount of force that will definitely pass from the medial compartment. So if you can repair the root, that means you are recruiting your meniscus to share some weight, whatever it is less, I understand with the osteotomy, but you are recruiting the meniscus to share some weight, which will, uh, you know, principally should, uh, you know, reduce the rate of osteoarthritis future, even after the osteotomy. Uh, so I, I agree, Amit. You know, that's a good point. And, uh, you know, this point is still debatable in literature. Uh, what they have shown is, and as I mentioned in my evidence-based uh, slides, was that in certain patients, the root repair has healed, but it is not translated into better clinical outcomes. So, you know, eventually what we are trying to achieve is uh, whether we can uh, slow down the progression of arthritis and make the patient relatively asymptomatic which so far has not shown strong evidence. Obviously, you know, the, the literature has bias. Uh, you know, the follow-up is less. The power is not enough. Uh, small numbers. But uh, it'll be interesting to see. So, you know, I, I, I would change my practice if I see unhappy patients uh, uh, where I have not repaired the root and just done an osteotomy. But uh, uh, alongside the progressive osteoarthritis, I've also noted that these patients are having higher BMI. So again, you know, if I repair the root, however well uh, I can get back to its anatomical position, I'm not sure whether whether it will sustain with time, you know, or whether it is relatively uh, unimportant. But yes, I mean, this is a matter of uh, uh, debate, and uh, I hope we get certain strong evidence uh, in the forthcoming years. Yeah, what is your take on uh, osteotomy with root repair? 
Yeah, as uh, Amit she told, uh, the, it's like uh, no, some part of the you know, when you do osteotomy, so some part of the weight will be transmitted in the medial compartment also. So even though it uh, completely almost 70 to 80 percent transmits through the lateral compartment, so I think it's a better to do a medial meniscal root repair in, with centralization uh, of meniscus to have some load in the medial compartment right? always when you do uh, osteotomy so some part of the uh, no, uh, weight will be transmitted to the medial compartment also so uh, better to repair as I told uh, as uh, stage that uh, told we have to see the I think that is one of the common MRI findings seeing of the meniscal extrusion. Even after root repair, sometimes you repeat your MRI, you get that extrusion. So, yes, whether you are concerned with that? Uh, no, you no, just I, I'm it? certainly concerned because the results have shown that the knee will just uh, deteriorate with time if you don't address that. Uh, because earlier we were just trying to repair the root and we were not uh, reducing the meniscus extrusion. So, um, uh, it, it is a very important uh, aspect. Uh, so, I do pay importance. Um, if it is a smaller area, then I would just do a all inside uh, suture anchor repair. But if it is a larger area of extrusion, then uh, I would do like a menisco tibial repair. So, uh, it will it'll reduce the meniscus from front to back uh, and you know over the uh, tibiofemoral articulation. And uh, in the OJSM in November last year, we've done a review on meniscal extrusion. So it is really important factor uh, that we have to deal with that. We cannot just ignore meniscal extrusion and just repair the root. All right. I think the last talk was very important. So, I mean, so it's a stable ramp or unstable ramp. Okay. Whether you will plan for conservative operating money. Yeah, I think, uh, Rajiv, you know, um, the stable and unstable ramp or lesion, um, these are classified based upon the size of the size of the lesion. Mm -hmm. If it is more than one centimeter, they are considered as unstable. If it is less than one centimeter, considered as but but you see, uh, if ramp lesion has occurred. And if it is a chronic ramp, chronic ramp lesion, it is not going to heal. Either it is stable or it is unstable. So in case of chronic ramp lesion, uh, probably uh, a repair is the only choice. Only when uh, in acute cases, like in my case, I showed that uh, it was an acute case. It was about to heal. Uh, you, you, you felt that it's a ramp lesion. Uh, but you see, there are study which says that lesser than smaller than uh, one centimeter can be treated conservatively and bigger than that one require a repair. But I think there is no harm on putting one odd uh, suture on the ramp reason so that you know you have repaired something and it's not going to cause any problem. For me, uh, ramp lesion, uh, say it is stable or unstable, I put one or two sutures. So what about routine? Because as you told, it was only in one cases the radiologist could have picked up the ramp lesion in your study. In 11 cases, it was missed. So do you go for a routine postomedial uh, arthroscopy for in all ACL injuries to see whether the ramp lesion is there or not? I think, I think if, if you go to current recommendation of diagnostic arthroscopy, your diagnostic arthroscopy is incomplete until unless you see the posterior medial compartment, specifically when we're talking about, when we are talking about um, ACL tear. But if you go to literature, you find out that there are some literature which, is, which has reported ramp lesion, even without the, you know, obvious ACL tear. There may be some changes in the ACL, but there could be a ramp tear without ACL tear as well. So I, I over the last two years, every arthroscopy, Either it is ACL or without ACL, the posterior medial compartment is examined. I, I would love to know what Shreyas and Jaya and yeah, even Jaya. Uh, so, is this a routine procedure now? Because now it's a part of diagnostic roundup, I think, to not to miss the ramp. Yeah, you should not miss the ramp and root. Yeah, for every That's for every case, we should uh, uh, no alternate the entire posterior medial and posterior lateral area. It's very important. 
Yes, Shreyas. Yeah, absolutely. I I agree with that. That you know, we just have to keep learning and improvising. Uh, you know, our management. So certainly, for every patient, uh, I don't put do the Gilchrist maneuver and look at that uh, area in great detail to make sure that uh, nothing's missed. And uh, again, to you know, no apologies for repeating even. when we treat meniscal root tears an alignment view is a must you will be surprised how your decision making may change once you get that view so very important and have a standardization so there is no uh, false positives or negatives i think i think <laughs> rajib I, i can i just add and say that if you look at um, a paper from uh, tanot and sonricotti group their group uh, of paper they very uh, elaborately say that just doing a, a modified gilkist maneuver and going into the posterior medial compartment is not enough and they say that about 20% of the ramp lesions were missed only by inspection so they say that if they find any abnormal contour of the ramp or abnormal tissue in the ramp then they suggest that pass a needle from the posterior medial get a needle into the posterior medial and try to probe so that uh, as i showed in my presentation try to probe that ramp area if you find that those tissue are something you know doubtful some dubious structures then you make a posterior medial portal pass your probe through the posterior medial portal and try to probe so that you don't miss this ramp lesion and there are paper coming up which say that if you miss this ramp lesion lesion and then the chances of failure of your acl reconstruction is very high in case of missed ramp lesion Yeah, no, absolutely. The probe has to be used either uh, if you can go all the way through the anterior medial portal, if not uh, through the posterior medial portal, to make sure that you check for any hidden, you know, or a small lesion. Absolutely. I think probing and needling they both have been uh, described because in chronic cases sometimes you have a thin fibrous layer. So once you put your needle, you see the whole thing is getting opened up, and then you think yeah, it's it was a small rib, but ultimately you see it's more than one centimeter, and you have to plan for it there. I think is there any question in chat box? No, I think I can't see any question in chat box. Niraj, yeah, I think we can have a vote of thanks from you. Yeah, you are muted, Jay. So thank you very much, uh, Biotech uh, Company, for uh, hosting this uh, webinar. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Amit Joshi, Shreyas Gajar, Dr. Rajiv Raman. Uh, we'll meet soon with another topic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Nice to connect with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you so much.